Britain's emergency bikers are on the front line, racing to protect the public and save lives. And they've never been more crucial. With 33 million vehicles on UK roads, the country's congested cities and major routes are the busiest in Europe. The bike squads of Essex Police and West Midlands Ambulance Service provide help where it's most needed, fast. No reason you can have a lock knife, straightforward offence. How many bangs did you hear? On emergency bikers, a man's having a suspected stroke. Apparently your colleagues said you were screaming out in pain. Do you remember doing that? No. The dangers of driving while tired. 36 hours or something without arrest, and it resulted in uh, him killing people. And a patient's taking a bit of handling. Keep still. All right, it's all right. It's all right, I'm going to. Just relax. Nice, slow, deep breath. 6.30 a.m., and the Birmingham biker paramedics are getting ready for another 12-hour shift. Morning. You're right. Oh. My baby. My pride and joy. It's two years old and done 1,200 miles. Doesn't come out in bad weather. Gets looked after. It's a she. So she gets lots of TLC. A bit of money spent on her. Yeah. Pride and joy. On their Yamaha FJR 1300s, they race to around 100 calls a week within an eight mile radius of the city centre and have to be ready to tackle anything. There's an awful lot of money. Where's it coming from? Keep still. Keep still. To capture the action, we put special cameras on each rider and bike so we arrive at the scene the second they do. First thing, and there's a 999 call. Thank you. So we can confirm it's the fish market and not the wholesale market. A 53-year-old fishmonger has screamed out in pain and clutched his chest. On call, Mark Hayes. Maneuvering the bike, top speed 130 and around four times his own body weight, demands skill. After two minutes, he's first on scene, arriving in half the time it takes an ambulance. Every minute saved is crucial in the battle to save lives. What's happening? Well, it's just somebody started screaming out, somebody's holding them still. First of all, I'm going to fix on it. I'm going to run up straight away, don't it? This is how we end. Hello there. Hi there. What's your name, chap? Dylan. What's your name? What's happening today? Did you mean? What's happened this morning? Why have we been called? Can you tell me? No. If it's a stroke, the blood supply to the brain can suddenly shut down. Confusion is a telltale sign. Mark runs a few basic tests. Okay, do me a favour. Can you squeeze my hands for me? Hard as you can. Hard, hard. Good man. Well done. Okay. Hold your hands out in front of me, in front of you. Nice and high. Okay, not to worry. Relax. Good man. Weakness in his left side adds to the stroke evidence. He needs to get to hospital fast. Strokes account for 9% of all deaths in men. Survivors can face permanent disability. Where'd you live? Uh, um, Um, not, not to worry, I'll come back no, to you. No, no, it's all right. Um, Just relax. Relax your hand out. Have you been unwell recently at all? No. You've been OK? Yeah. Ever had anything like this before? Like what? The episode that you're having this morning. A bit confused. Apparently your colleagues said you were screaming out in pain. Do you remember doing that? No. No? OK. Just lift your glasses for me a second, can you? I'll light into your eyes if you look at me. Mark checks pupils. The left one is not responding in the same way as the right. Every second counts and an ambulance crew arrives to get him to hospital. This is I believe he's about 53 years of age. Don't worry about the mess, mate. We'll sort that out in a second. You just relax. Uh, just before 8 o'clock, he was seen to start uh, screaming out, appeared to be in pain, was holding his chest. 
got a left-sided weakness. Get him to hold his arms out, left arm drops. Um, he tells me he's normally fit well with uh, no medications, no allergies. However, he's somewhat confused. Uh, pupils, right pupils, five mil, reactive. Left pupil was about three mil and reactive. Yeah. Do you understand what's going on? No, not really. Right, okay. I mean, I've, you know, I feel all right. You, you know, feel all right? I don't know what... Um... And where are you? Where am I? Where, where are you at the moment? Where are we? At work. At work. Where do you work? Uh, um, okay. Well, for those reasons, we need to pop you to the hospital. Yep. All right, mate. Yep. Okay. It's really, really uh, important uh, that people know the signs of a stroke, which can be anything from slurred speech, confusion, weakness in any of the limbs, facial muscles uh, can droop to one side. It's really, really important to act quickly uh, with the stroke um, because it, it, time is brain, basically. Um, the, the quicker you react and get to a, a place of treatment, i.e. hospital, uh, the quicker um, the hospital now can do procedures to minimise the damage, uh, minimise the effect of, a, of a, a stroke. In the back of the ambulance, it's more alert. With luck, treatment and rest, he should recover. What can happen with a, a mini stroke, it's, it's short lived and you do see a, a quick recovery. Um, if I remember correctly, a TIA, transient ischemic attack, which is a mini stroke, short lived and you normally um, recover within 24 hours or so, as opposed to a full blown stroke, which could be months and months of rehabilitation. After the break, the biker cops are chasing speeders. Your recorded spoon. A little bit high, isn't it? And a man's hit by a car on a busy road. We don't know what injuries you've got. It's really important that you don't move. Essex. 5,000 miles of roads for the biker cops to police. Key routes in and out of major ports. Stansted Airport and London. One stretch of road has seen one death and 32 injuries in six months. On patrol, PC Martin Ackers. On fast dual carriageways, drivers can be tempted to put their foot down. And it's not long before Martin has a fast moving white van in his laser sights. White van here, 89 miles an hour. This is where the speed and agility of the biker cops come into their own. On the squad's covert bike, top speed 180, Martin can outrun anything. In just seconds, he's calling in the driver. Hello there, come and join us on the pavement for a couple of ticks. Right, thanks very much for stopping. The reason why I've asked yourself to stop, the maximum speed limit for this road, for your class of vehicle, is... 70. 60. Single carriageway, 50 miles an hour. Dual carriageway, 60 miles an hour. Motorway, 70 for that class of vehicle. That's 70. That is a 60 on a dual carriageway. That is your recorded speed today. 89 miles per hour, quite clearly too fast. 29 miles per hour over the speed limit. Oh. Right, what I need to say to yourself, you're gonna be reported for traveling in excess of the permitted limit for the class of vehicle on this road today. Have you got any points on your license? Yeah, I have. How many have you got? Six. And what were the six points for? Born exactly the same here. Yeah. On the car. Speeding again. On this road, yeah. Yeah. 70, 77. Downhill again. And, uh, and the ones on my mobile phone. And phone. Day. That's right. it. So really could do with that at all, you know what I mean? Really right, important. okay. We appreciate it. No okay. excuses, you know, but, but just, I could really do without three points. I know. The I endorsable know. fixed penalty notice, which is what you had before by the sounds of it, that yeah. notice runs out at, I'm afraid, this is 89, it runs out at 85 miles per hour. So at 86 mile an hour above, the matter goes to a magistrate's court. Is that the white, because that's the white van? Because it's a white van, because it's a commercial vehicle. I didn't, yeah. I didn't know that. 
I can't work it out. I don't know. They know they've got all got every vehicle's got a speedometer in front of them. They know they're not allowed faster than 70 in a car, which this guy thought he couldn't go any faster than 70. He's doing 89. I don't know. Just like knock, knock, hello. <laughs> the man has been charged with speeding and could be banned from driving. The biker cops have so far managed to half last year's accident rate, and Martin's vigilance today soon pays off again. A white van is careering towards him at well over the speed limit. Come and join us on the pavement just for a couple of minutes. Thanks very much. The reason why I've asked yourself to stop. Yep. The maximum speed limit for your class of vehicle along this road is... 60. 60. Right. Your recorded speed. Ooh. A little bit high, isn't it? Yeah. 105 miles an hour, 45 miles per hour over the permitted speed limit. Yeah. Is there any reason for the excess speed at all today? Yeah. No? I didn't even realise it was going that far. You also realise that you're in excess of the permitted limit. You must have been at those sort of speeds. I didn't think I was any more than 70, but obviously... Not. Right, OK. I, I well, when I saw you coming speed. down the hill there, yeah. I thought, my God, this guy's shifting. That was my first impression. And then this has backed up my evidence. That's quite a high speed, yeah, yeah. really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah for a restricted... Sorry? I didn't think I was capable of it. But... They are. <laughs> they are. I've stopped many at that speed before. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's a shame that these people feel the need to go those sort of speeds when it's quite clearly not necessary, especially in his... I mean, I asked him whether he needed to do that speed um, and he had no reason for doing the speed whatsoever. I don't think they really think of the consequences, what can happen afterwards, you know, should he be involved in a crash at that high speed. Yes, Lost no me, worries. sorry about circumstances, right. we have to meet under. All the best. I think he's looking at perhaps a small period of disqualification for that one. That's quite a high speed, really. The driver has been charged with speeding. He could lose his license. When he's off duty, Martin likes to take things a bit more slowly. But for this passionate biker, it still involves being on less than four wheels. This is uh, sidecar trials. It's a pre-1965 Triumph we've got here. Purpose built for trials work. Although I do all the riding at work, um, I don't ride this off-road, I'm a passenger. I've had enough of uh, riding during the week, so my uh, friend Alan uh, does the driving of the bike. It's all slow speed stuff. It's all over rough ground, obstacles. Very technical, really. All good fun. It may be slower than his BMW cop bike, but it's no less demanding. You can't ride this bike on your own. You've got to have a passenger in it, otherwise it will tip over. It's down to me to lean out the side of the sidecar to get as much weight to counterbalance the, uh, the lean angle and hopefully get round that obstacle. We tend to get it right most times, but there's been the odd occasion. <laughs> it's been a passion of mine. I've been on bikes now for 30 years. It's just one of those things. It's in your blood. You can't get rid of it. And uh, this is uh, just one way. Now I'm uh, getting on a bit of slowing down a little bit. I think I've done all the race tracks and everything and uh, they hurt when you fall off. This one isn't too bad, not at sort of like five mile an hour anyway. <laughs> Every week in Britain, 10 pedestrians are killed on the roads and more than 500 are injured. And in Birmingham's evening rush hour, a man has been hit by a car crossing the road from a pub. Biker paramedic Mark Hayes is on his way. He covers just under five miles in five minutes. A senior ambulance officer happened to be passing by and a woman is comforting the patient. My name's Mark, I'm a made cycle paramedic. Uh, we're going to be looking after you. What I need you to do is keep nice and still for me. All right, we're going to check you over head to toe and we're going to get you to hospital. All right, OK. We'll sort that, mate, don't worry, we'll sort that. Where have you got pain at the moment? Everywhere. Everywhere, all right, mate. The man has hit his head on the bonnet and he's bleeding heavily. You can't, mate. I need well, you. What do you want to do? 
Keep still, matey. Let me pop this on you. Fellow biker paramedic Barry Rudge steps in to help immobilise the man's neck. They can't afford any risks with back and neck pain. Any movement could result in paralysis, but trying to get to the bottom of the man's injuries isn't going to be easy. We need to start doing some checks on... You listen to me. We need to... No, just keep still a second. What we need to do, we need to start doing some checks on you. I don't want you moving because we don't know what injuries you've got. It's really important that you don't move. Do you understand what I'm saying? I know you're in pain. I'm going to need to get to your arm. We're going to have to cut the sleeve of your jacket. I can't move you. No, I don't cut you. I can't, you can't, you can't get your arm out. He doesn't want his jacket cutting and tries to take it off himself. Keep still, keep still. No, don't take it off. I'll, I'll do take it. Off, take it off, take keep it off. still. Keep still. All right, it's all right. Take it off, it's all right. I'm going to. Just relax, relax. Nice. Listen to me, mate. Nice, slow, deep breaths, yeah? We're going to have a go get it off. We're, we're, we can't take that. That's too painful. We can't take that off you, mate. Can't do it, can't do it, yeah. Sweet. Sweet. Where does that hurt? Oh, bro. Where? Which one? Right, that's the whole reason why it needs to be cut and not moved. Oh, bro, they got it, mate. Keep still. Keep still, keep still, keep still. You know, when you yell, where does it hurt the most? Yeah, it's because you knocked some teeth out, mate. Mark needs to listen to the man's chest. There could be a risk of a collapsed lung which puts pressure on the heart and blood vessels. Nice deep breaths. Good man. And again. Deep breath. Good man. And again. Good man. And again. Deep breath. Good man. His chest is clear, but it's no easy task trying to assess his injuries. Listen. You need to listen to me, mate. Everything we're doing, we're doing for a reason, yeah? If you've damaged your neck or your back and we let you get up, the injury that you could sustain it could be far worse than it is now. I need to pop a needle in the back of your hand. Is that okay? Thank yeah. you. Good man, thank you. So do me a favour, nice and still now. Yeah, one, two, three. Mark wants to insert a cannula to administer painkillers. Keep your hand there, don't move, don't move. Nice and still now. Good man, well done. Keep nice and still for me. What it means now is we can give you something for the pain through this, all right, yeah? Having checked his neck and back, Mark takes a look at his foot. Can you move your toes? Good man. Excellent. Can you feel me touching? Feel me touching? Good man. All right. Can you move your foot up and down? Because that's not grossly deformed, is it? So. Move your foot. Push up and down. down. Yeah. Being able to move his toes means there is no nerve damage, but his leg could be fractured and his knee injured. All right, just relax, just relax. The inflatable splint will keep his leg stable and prevent any further injury in transit. I've got the pump yet. Yep. One, two, three. Just relax back. It's fine. Keep going. Relax. Relax. Okay, you're okay. Because oh, you've been sat relax. still for so long. Good man, well done. Okay, well done. On your lap as well. Okay. Good. He's under the influence of alcohol. He's also a bit agitated, aggressive. Is that due to the alcohol? Is it due to injury? Um, it's hard to assess. He's obviously in a lot of pain. That's right, cool. Is that still the leg? Initial observations that we've done check out okay. But uh, obviously he needs to be assessed, x-rays, etc, etc. There we go, mate. You're done. Should we have a look for some teeth? It's yet another tricky case for Mark. Of the three biker paramedics, he reckons he attracts more than his fair share of accidents. Nine times out of ten, it'll be me. Um, they can have a bus crash, nobody's injured, I'll have a bus crash, and bits have got to be cut off, people have got to be carried out windows. It's, it's never straightforward. Whereas the other two, they're, they're a little bit old, they like more of a sedate life. Um, I'm the baby of the unit, I think I can cope just about. After the break, the biker cops have to safeguard homecoming troops. There's a bit of a security issue with them. This uh, Muslim extremists have been um, protesting at each of their marches. And the dangers of sleeping rough. Very lucky, and the chances are he would have died.
Essex, 7 a.m., Biker Cops HQ. And there's a special operation. On duty, PC Ray Jeffrey. Five biker cops will be escorting 200 soldiers from the Royal Anglian Viking Regiment. They've just got back from Afghanistan and will be on parade in South End, 25 miles away. It's Ray's job to get them there safely. We're conscious that there's a, a, a bit of a security issue with them because uh, Muslim extremists have been um, protesting at each of their marches. There is a risk, so we will facilitate the movement of the coaches in one go all the way through to South End and they won't stop. On a previous occasion, Muslim protesters clashed with the English Defence League. There were two arrests. Ray needs to have his wits about him. Lads will be aware of vehicles that are parked in perhaps an, an unusual place or groups of people standing in a bit of an unusual place on the route. I'm hopeful that there won't be a problem for us because they don't know the route. Um, and from the information that I've been getting, the protests have taken place on foot amongst the crowd up until now. It's risky, you know, zipping around through traffic on motorcycles at high speed always has a risk and you're always conscious that one of the lads might just uh, take a tumble. We can cater for that, as long as they're not seriously hurt, that, that will be catered for and we'll, we'll, we must keep the convoy moving. If there's a breach of security, then it's my responsibility as uh, what we call Easy Rider, leading the convoy to find an alternative route quickly and take them safely away from the point of danger. Morning. Ray briefs the coach drivers. I'll be right in front of you, so I'll dictate the pace and the route. Just follow me, OK? When we get uh, eventually onto the A127, rather than lane one, we'll be taking lane two, so we command the whole road, because leading to south end gets a bit congested, so we'll have the road to ourselves, all right? And we shouldn't stop. If we do, I've got to buy you a cup of tea. <laughs> All right, though. Yeah, Have you done this before, joking aside? Yeah, yeah. So you know about bikes will be coming either side of you at high speed, so just keep an eye on your mirrors, won't you? And I'll, the rest should follow you. OK, cheers. It's looking good. We're going to have a nice early start, as it turned out. I'd rather get them down to South End so that we know we're in town ready, to, ready for the off than leave here late, and then everything runs a bit late. The convoy consists of a long column of four coaches, a minibus and two vans, and they must be kept together. Thank you, convoy is moving off. Immediately outside the service is the first roundabout. Traffic is brought to a halt to get the convoy on the road. With the column safely en route, the pace picks up. It will need to move at a constant speed of 50. The biker cops accelerate to speeds of 100 as they race ahead to clear the route across roundabouts, through red lights, and seal off junctions. As they approach the A13 dual carriageway, the biker cops signal for traffic to move aside. So far, so good. All riders in place flanking the convoy and no sign of disruption. The outriders sprint ahead to clear the next junction. Half an hour later, an easy rider, Ray, has got the convoy into South End safe and sound. We're there. Yeah, the uh, troops are disembarking and forming up. It's gone swimmingly, and the weather's fantastic for them, isn't it? It's a big day for South End. Thousands are lining the streets to see the Vikings receive the freedom of the town. And there's not a protester in sight. It's the sort of job Ray loves. I enjoy these days, really enjoyable, especially as the weather's good for us. Uh, you just feel like you're actually doing your little bit for the, for the military, you know, for the lads that are across the waters fighting for us as we speak. Um, this particular uh, regiment, I understand, have lost five of their number in recent years in Afghanistan. And if, I, if we can assist them in any way, that's, that's good. I like that. Birmingham, 
Like any major city, there are rough sleepers, and a body has been spotted in a park on the edge of the city. On call, Barry Rudge. He covers just over three miles in under four minutes to the park in the city suburbs. There's a gentleman who's been found in the bushes by a dog. The, uh, the lady that's called said he was there last night. So she doesn't know if he's been there all night. We don't actually know if he's alive yet or not either, so. Man's in there. He's, he's conscious, but he just seems really cold. Can you hear me? Hello, sir, can you hear me? Hello. Oh, you're very cold. Not the warmest of nights to be out all last night, young man. We'll get you sorted. All right. It's been a warm late spring, but temperatures can still plummet to below zero overnight. And alcohol lowers body temperatures even more. He's extremely cold. He's coming up low on our, on our thermometer. So uh, he's very stiff. He's a bit confused, so we're querying hypothermia. The man's blue, and confusion and shivering are classic symptoms of hypothermia, where the body loses more heat than it can produce. It's the ultimate enemy for anyone sleeping rough and is potentially fatal. Barry needs to get him to hospital fast. Can you hear me now? Yeah. OK. We've got a stretcher coming across. We're going to get you out of the bushes. You're going to have to help us, OK? Mm. And get you out. We'll wrap you up. We'll take you to the hospital and we'll try and warm you up a little bit. All right. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three. That's well it. done. Oh. oh, that's better. It only takes a dip of around seven degrees in core body temperature for major organs to shut down. Don't fight against me, pal. If we can get a vein, we'll put some warm fluids into him. Um, so basically, we've got it's, it's like central heating. If we put some warm fluids inside his veins, it warms Gina, him up from the inside relax. out. Relax for me. Sharp stretch coming up. He's very lucky. I mean, uh, the colder part of the year, although it was quite chilly last night, um, the chances are he would have died. What's it going on now? That's looking good, isn't it? Yeah, Dealing with the homeless too. in Birmingham, it's becoming a lot more common now than it used to be. They usually find warm places. They, they tend to know where they all are. Back of shops where the, uh, the heaters are or the air condition extractors, which throw some heat out. To find somebody in the middle of a bush in a park is, is actually a new one on myself. The biker paramedics have to make life-saving decisions on the spot. And just getting to incidents piles on the pressure. Riding to calls demands every ounce of concentration, even for an ex-racing champ like Barry. Obviously, you've got to be able to ride the motorcycle well, keep yourself safe on the way to a job, not think about the job on the way there. You've got to think about the ride first. You've got to make sure you're safe and you get there, because if you don't, you're going to end up with a crew coming out to you. Barry never knows quite what to expect when he arrives at the scene. Work in a patch where you where you roughly live. You, you, I suppose your worst nightmare is dealing with somebody that you actually know. I've actually been responded to my own father. That was really weird because you have to sort of bring your emotions right down and deal with it in a pragmatic way and still go through the numbers and deal with it as you would deal with a normal person. Once I'd ascertained that he was um, he was okay, everything was stable then you sort of bring it back to the fact that he was your father and then you can go more onto the emotional side and make sure he's all right. His dad's fit and healthy. A paramedic himself, it was him who inspired Barry to ditch his factory job and ambitions to be a cabinet maker. Oh, well, it's right. I'm in love with my right. He's a regular visitor to his parents to swap notes. When I first went in, I was doing 70 hours one week and 80 hours the next, every single week. Oh, I wouldn't do that now. <laughs> they wouldn't allow it now, would no, they? No, they wouldn't do that now. I used to be on call at 10 o'clock at night from the house, 
and she was to un she was to answer treble nines. See. If it was an outside line and they mm. dialed treble nine, he used to come through to our house, so, uh, yeah. and and the wife. Just your mum used on. to answer it. I was expecting uh, Barry at the time when all this was going yeah. on. See, mm. that's what's mate. It's got. Uh, and have a guess who? And have a guess who took you in? Who took the yeah. wife in to have you? Oh, hang on a minute. Yeah, but you. She called you. And you come and fetched her on the outpatient truck and she had to go on with all the other outpatients <laughs> first before she took, you took me into the blooming That's maternity correct. hospital. Well, that wasn't too bad. It only took two hours to get there. You were just trying to deliver me, weren't you? I know you were. <laughs> two hours to get me to the hospital. I could, yeah, I could have been one. I could have been born and one year old. Yeah, but just think of the experience that you had though now. Yeah. Look, look where it's made. I know, it's got me used to being in ambulances. First response paramedic. <laughs> Very proud, very proud of him. Very proud of him. My lad. <laughs> Essex and the fight against a growing problem, insurance dodgers. One in 20 motorists drive without insurance. Weeding them out, automatic number plate recognition cameras. In the UK, they snap 14 million images a day. On patrol in Greys near the Thames Estuary, PC Mick Wills. He soon tipped off about a car that appears to be uninsured. Mick pulls over the driver. The car's been bought to sell in Africa, but the man's not covered to drive it on his existing insurance. You're not insured, basically. What it is here? Yeah. What it you is? You can drive is... other cars yeah. you don't own, yeah. and you can drive the car you've got the policy on. Yeah. You can't drive another car that you've bought, so you'll be reported for that offence, OK? You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you don't mention one question. Yeah, OK, yeah. Something later on in court, and if you do say, maybe give me evidence. Right, I've, I've seized the car now, so we will dispose of it. I'll take some details from you. You'll have to go to court for no insurance. But that's not all. OK. The man's been yeah. using an African driving licence. When did you become a legal resident of the UK? Oh, 1989, yeah. years ago. Well, then you need a, a UK driving licence. So you're driving without insurance, and you're driving without a driving licence. So you're going to be reported for both those offences, um, and we're going to seize the vehicle. Can the shippers come and pick it up? No. This is my car now. I've, I've seized this. Right, OK. Until, until such time as you come up with some insurance. The car won't be heading to Africa today, but there's an even bigger problem. The date of birth and address the man supplied do not tally with the police records, and checks reveal previous convictions. Confirm. It's all a bit of a riddle. Biker Squad Sergeant Nick Edwards steps in to try to get to the bottom of things. You've been arrested before, haven't you? For what? No, I've never been arrested before. For fraud? No. You need to just be honest with us. I'm honest. That's what I'm telling you. You know, you're saying that you've never been arrested, and you clearly haven't been arrested. None of the names he's talking about. That's not my date of birth, is it? No, the, the bottom line is, someone with your name, yeah. living at that address, yeah. was previously arrested for fraud. No, I've never been arrested. Not for fraud. It was a long time ago. No, no, not for fraud. I mean, you just, all, all we're asking is just for you to be honest with me. I don't mind. I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem talking to you. Yeah, he has those scars. Um, that is a gentleman. Um, he's given a different date of birth, as you know. We've seized the vehicle. We've gone into his details, and he's got um, different date of birth. Um, he's been. Um, he's given us an address which doesn't. We can't check out. You've given me an address which you can't verify. So, um, the way to verify that. OK, so what? How can I do that? Whom do you want it to be? Adam? Do you want to ring my friend? No, because that won't really help. It could be anyone, couldn't it? What do I do? Are you on the voting switch today? Voting switch? Yes, I just waited. I just waited this morning before I came out. From that address? Uh, from that address, yeah. Right, that'll help. Where, where did you vote? SE... SE8. Do you do voters on an address to follow? Which one did you vote? I voted about, um... Something tonight. You voted at nine? Yeah. South-East London. Yeah. It's now five past ten. You're in Essex. I took a train down here. Right. Yeah. To pick this vehicle up. I voted. I voted in the morning before when I came out. Right. So you came out at nine o'clock. You voted. I'm not very sure about the time. Don't quote me on that time. You just told me it was nine o'clock. Well, I, I, I'm not too sure about the time. Can we save a bit of time here? Because I've just checked the voters register for that address. I'm not there. No, you're not on it. Which one? On this address. So you couldn't have voted. What I'm saying is, from our point of view, What's we need to be sure. That where we send the summons to, yeah. you're going to be there. When you send me my summons, right, I need to make sure I answer to them. Otherwise, I'm going to get in trouble. What I'm going to do, 
I'm not at all happy with the details you've given me. Okay? So I'm arresting you, okay? So we can ensure service of summons and, and ensure we've got the right person. That is no problem, officer. You're just doing your job. Yes, yeah, so he was basically um, making his answer split the questions, really. We need to make sure we can follow them through with a summons and he goes to court, so he's going to the police station while we take his fingerprints and um, just, you know, verify his address, basically. He's been searched um, briefly. He's, got he's given... Well, two different dresses while we've been talking to him, so obviously there's something not quite right. Miles, we take it very seriously. If, you know, if you're involved in an accident with someone that's not insured, then it becomes very complicated for you. It's just a complete pain, really. Uh, most people pay their insurance and pay a lot of money for it. So, uh, you know, people that don't um, deserve to lose their car. The man has been charged with having no insurance and driving without a British licence. After the break, the dangers of driving while tired. 36 hours or something without arrest, and it resulted in uh, him killing people. And a pensioner yeah. takes a tumble on an escalator. I'm meeting someone at Wolverhampton in another hour of time. That's right. the thing. Essex, Operation Mermaid. Random checks on the thousands of lorries that daily thunder along the major county routes and pour out of the ports. It's only recently that the biker cops have been empowered to impose on the spot penalties to continental drivers. Today, they're after anyone breaking driving time rules. On patrol, PC Steve Stomp Allen. I do like the HGVs and having a look through the tachographs and enforcing um, goods vehicle legislation. He knows only too well that a tired driver is a lethal driver. There are several high-profile ones in the county where they've shown that the drivers have had considerable periods without rest. Yeah, 36 hours or something without arrest, and it resulted in uh, him killing people. And that's what this is about, is to make sure they have the rest and then obviously improve road safety. The biker cops on their powerful BMWs, acceleration 0 to 60 in under four seconds, can pull in four times as many suspects as a police car. And more than 2,500 drivers have been done for infringing rest rules. Stomp is standing by to investigate this Italian driver's tachograph, which records how long and how fast he's been traveling. Disc or card? Disc. Every driver should have an 11-hour break from the wheel in every 24 hours. Across six days, they can get away with no less than three nine-hour breaks. But there are two periods Stomp is not happy about. It shows nine hours rest, but he's interrupted it on two occasions. Now, if you interrupt your uh, daily rest to go on and off a ferry, you've got to extend that rest up to 11 hours. A check of the discs in the mobile office confirmed that the drivers worked twice during the night to get onto and off the ferry. It might seem a minor infringement, but the biker cops believe in playing it tough. Pay now rather than pay later with potentially lethal costs. The driver's lorry will be clamped for 11 hours to enforce the correct break. He will also be fined £200, which, due to the language difficulties, needs to be explained to his head office. He will need to pay me £200 before he goes. Uh, Stomp's got no time for anyone who criticises the crackdown. I get aggrieved slightly that there are people out there doing it. I try not to let it be, become a personal issue because I don't think that's right. As now I'm a parent, um, I am more, a lot more considerate for what's going on out on the roads and I worry for me my family more. In one day alone, Essex police have been known to clamp 16% of the lorries they stop. And in his experience over the years, traffic cop PC Gary Winfield suspects it's not always the drivers who are at fault. I personally feel it's all to do with the companies want to make money, to, and it's all to do with pushing the drivers as far as they can. Um, and it's, I think it all boils down to making money. This driver has also failed to take enough rest, which cost him £60. OK. OK. More than 17 grand in fines has been exacted in Essex in just three months. And drivers know the biker cops mean business, with nearly 100 Operation Mermaid crackdowns a year. Birmingham, a city with one of the busiest road networks in the country. 
but it's also home to seven railway stations, handling around 60 million passengers a year. Mark's racing to Snow Hill, the second largest station within the city. He can go where an ambulance can't, right into the heart of the concourse. An 88-year-old man has fallen on the escalator. Like down. Okay, thank you. Hello. You're right there. So, what's your name? Chapman, Jeff, for the gym. Jeff, what's happened, Jeff? I just fell down the escalator. Oh, right, okay. Okay, have you got any pain in your neck? No, Keep still. Neck. Any pain down your chest? No. Deep breath? Marvellous, good man. Any pain in your tummy? None whatsoever. Excellent. And um, where are you off to? Wolverhampton, then to Spain. Oh, right. When did you go to Spain? Today? Friday. Oh, Friday. Right, OK. Jeff doesn't appear to have any internal injuries, but he's got some nasty cuts. What I'll do is redress that. Um, you've got some... Uh, it's like tissue paper. Your skin dries out, and it's actually flaps of skin. Um, I think what we need to do is we need to get it seen at a hospital clean, tidy it up and dress properly. This is what we don't want. We don't want you coming down with an infection. I'm meeting some at Wolverhampton in another hour's time. That's right. the thing. OK. Well, I'll, I'll dress that for you now, but my advice is we'll pop you up to the local casualty, get it cleaned up properly and get it dressed properly. I mean, I, my advice is that we pop you up there and get it done now. The longer it, your wounds remain untreated and unclean, the more the risk of infection. Just going to pop a plaster on that one. The plasters I carry normally are for the little children, so they've got little uh, characters on. You'll have to excuse me, it's a Shrek plaster. Yeah, sure, right. Now he's patched up, Jeff wants to continue on his way rather than go to hospital in Birmingham. I'll go to the hospital in, um, in Wolverhampton. You promised me you're going to do that? Yes, I will do. Yes. If I could just get you to print your name there for me, please. Just to say you're not going to hospital with us. I've put that you're going to make your own way to New Cross. Yes. Also, if you win the lottery, you're going to give me half. Is that all right? Actually, I was the first who won the 87 million. Were you really? Yes. Oh. <laughs> what are you travelling by train for, then? <laughs> so what, what are you getting now? I'm going to catch the metro. The metro. Uh, to Wolverhampton, then I get a taxi from um, the metro to um, where my lady lives. OK. That's it, lovely. Where your lady lives. Eight, 88 years young and still fighting for it. She's only 71. Oh, well, enjoy your trip. Take care. All right, watch what you're doing, Jeff. All right. Good man. Watch how you go. I will do. He's got a lady friend the other side of the city. Travels the world. Hope for me yet. Not that I want a lady the other side of the city, uh, because obviously I've got a good lady already. <laughs> That'll be me after the divorce courts. In the city centre, it looks like Mark's on a recruitment drive. So you're a bit of a bi racer then? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to be into motorbikes when you're older? No, why not? I'm going to be a policeman. You're going to be a policeman? You can be a policeman on a motorbike. No, I'm going to be an ambulance, not on a motorbike. That's too dangerous for me. Why, why do you have rights and lean like this? Why? Why do you lean like this? We don't. The only reason you're leaning like that is because you're small and your arms won't reach. I'm a bit bigger and a little bit older than you. Only a little bit though. Yeah. How old do you think? 40. 40? Hang on, let me take my helmet off. How old now? Do I look younger now? I took the helmet off. Yeah, good lad, well done. Ever had anything like this before? No, well. Fishmonger made a quick recovery and is back at work. The man hit by a car lost some teeth, his knee took a bang and he had some cuts and abrasions, but he made a good recovery. And Jeff had his cuts checked by a GP. They've healed and he had a very nice holiday in Spain. Okay, watch what you're doing. All right. Next time on Emergency Bikers, there's a 999 to a suspected stabbing, Merseyside Fire Brigade unveiled the UK's first firefighting bike. And a hairdresser comes a cropper.